Hello, friends. Can you hear me? Hi, Corey. So nice to do this together. So if you all want to close your eyes, And take a couple deep breaths in through your nose, now through your mouth. Gently letting go of anything that happened before this call or anything planned after this call, just let go of it. And as you become more and more relaxed, Imagine a bubble, like a soap bubble, in front of your third eye. And place any lingering thoughts, ideas, expectations about this call, expectations about your life, expectations about anything, place it all in the bubble. Even any ideas about who you think you are, place them in the bubble as well. And then whenever you're ready, just pop it with your imaginary finger. and the way it all goes. Now within this present field of oneness that remains, let's collectively set the intention that whatever is shared today is coming from the all to the all, as the all. And so when another body is sharing, see if you can remain in the space where there's actually no other. It's another aspect of you sharing. And 
we can all um, be available to what is and non-consumptive and fun and light and exciting, excited. Whenever you're ready, you can open your eyes. Thank you all and welcome. Thank you, Mark. <clears throat> welcome everybody. So nice to see you guys. Um, we had kind of a fun talk before this call, Mark and I did. Um, and just tuning into this session and what we can feel happening all together, it's like a it's like a like a family reunion kind of energy, like fun, connecting. Um, I can even feel some humor in this, and just sort of bringing you guys into the like behind the scenes um, of what we've been through as teammates and sort of long, long time, long time, seven ish years, practitioners of this work. And, um, I think we both, Mark and I both totally have the intention to just be like real and transparent and just share from our own personal experience, whatever we've learned or whatever was helpful. Um, <clears throat> cause I think a lot of stuff just kind of becomes tacit knowledge over time. Um, and we've all been together now in this container for well, different amounts, but maybe two years for some of us. Um, and it's without sort of bringing awareness to it, without sort of recognizing it, there's so much, like we've come so far, actually. There's so much tacit knowledge in here that's just like in there um, that without addressing it or sort of bringing it up, you almost don't even know is in there, but we can feel it. Like as a team, for instance, when we tune into NLS and how far NLS has come, it's noticeable. It's like, wow, this container, actually the people here, the, the, the level, like the culture is <clears throat> significantly higher than what it was when we, um, started, uh, significantly more unified and trustworthy and, um, like speaking the same language, like on the same wavelength. Um, so what we have, what the team has, or what Mark and I have, for instance, on this call, it's even even more of that, you could say, even more sort of time and um, like accumulation of this tacit knowledge. And I think what we would love more than anything is just to be able to bring you guys into that and share it and have sort of like a fun, casual, like low stakes way to share some of that stuff, share stories or insights or stuff that's really made a difference for us. Um, so we're excited. We feel a lot of like fun with this and we're happy to sort of go anywhere with you guys. I'll speak for myself. I think Mark feels the same. Um, yeah, Mark? For sure. I, that, that's the thing with the, that, what also was present in our call, um, the expectation thing, where I felt strongly to guide the meditation where just, inviting everybody to let go of any expectations. And I have the same for this call. Like it's it's a blank slate other than the intention of what Corey just shared. So this is a, an open stage basically. Uh, and I have no expectations and it, it feels great. Yeah, same for me. I, I really feel like we could go anywhere. And we, we Mark and I even had some <clears throat> fun thinking about doing this on a recurring basis or with different people from the team, just to really start to um, like build this two-way street, you could say, or just this sort of camaraderie here in this container. Um, so like for me already, it feels fun. Already it feels exciting. It feels like sort of a next level of connection and like uh, dynamism. I think that's a word. So <clears throat> I guess we can just hop into it. I was going to ask you, like, if there are two things, two teachings or two um, practices or anything, basically, that over the last seven years that really had, have made an impact on you. And you could only pick two. Well, what would those two be? One comes to mind immediately. Um, 
I'll think about the second. How is my internet, by the way? I'm on my, my, uh, you guys all hear me totally good. Okay. The one that comes to mind instantly, and I still use all the time. And it made a difference immediately too, when I first found uh, these teachings is the emotional guidance system. Um, and for those who don't know what that is, <clears throat> it's, um, it's basically that the better something feels, the more, um, you could say true it is, although it doesn't necessarily mean like factually true. It's more true for, uh, for you, or it's more accurate. It's more in alignment. So the better something feels, the better a thought or an interpretation feels, the more, and I actually do use, I use like the more accurate that is. So, and one thing that I do before I go there and the worse something feels is the more out of alignment that is, or the more sort of inconsistent with your true vibration that is. So um, super low sort of self-judgmental thoughts and it's just way off, like way off, like, and, and just to get better at the skill of discrediting thoughts that feel terrible um, or even medium bad. And this, this becomes a skill. This becomes like a, a spectrum that you can get super familiar, familiar with, super fast all with. Um, so one of the things I do actually is when I, when I have a, a thought that feels like, whoa, that is awesome. That expands me. It's um, it like comes with with confidence and generosity and clarity and obviousness. When I have a thought like that, I memorize it. I see it as a, a parallel timeline, like an access point to a parallel timeline, like an anchor to a, a timeline that is most true or more true. So I use these, I actually memorize these just with my mind, normal memorization. Like that's a little glimpse of accuracy right there. And everything else that's sort of confused or in the, um, in that like middle territory is um, just less accurate than this thought or than this uh, anchor point, this access point. So sort of like building your North star, building your, your compass and, and putting little flags along the way, like reminders. This is, this is more true. This is more relevant for you to focus on. So, and I've done this many times along the path, along the last five, seven years. Um, and they really act like that. They really act like like out in the ocean, like flags of clarity. Like, at least I remember this. At least I know this thing is true. So when things are really confusing or I'm really not sure, um, or because inevitably in this work, the doubts come up or the um, like the, the self-sabotage or whatever it is, inevitably that stuff comes up. So in those moments of storm, these flags of clarity are the only thing that... Um, the only guidance. So, so that's been huge. That's like the number one tool. And I can probably think of another one, but I'm curious, Mark, um, what the first one is for you. Well, you stole mine, so I can't do that one. Oh. No, I'm just kidding. But, but, uh, but, but true to when I was introduced to it, it was like, I think me when Trinfinity was launched, I think, or even before when I went to a retreat in Amsterdam where Ben introduced this concept and I was like, ding. And I took it to the next level because I felt bad a lot of the time. So that's where the conviction came in, like the trust in Ben as a channel. And like, oh, when I feel bad, it means I'm believing in something that's not in alignment with the way my higher self sees things. Oh, okay. I don't even have to know what it is. I don't have to investigate if there's no clarity. I can just, just rest in that. Like, I feel bad. I must believe in something that's not true. And I, and now I feel excited about it when I feel bad. <laughs> because I and know there's not me to yeah. be revealed yes and it is something that we use with each other um, i'm sure you guys also have had this in your keto but especially with the with the team and bentinho will do this all the time and if you're explaining something to him and he'll just be like and how does that feel yeah and it's a it's like a you know case closed so um yeah it's definitely a tool that we all use like regularly and i think the better that we get at this it just like 
but you can do it all the time. It's like, it's all the time. There's some, there's some level of sort of interpretation going on. And um, like, this is a practice that you can take all the way. Yep. Yeah. yeah and uh, of course uh, I can pick another one, uh, which has tremendously impacted me um, still to this day. And that is uh, admitting defeat. And the way I started applying it wasn't like necessarily that the, the core leg belief was clear to me. It was more true catalyst. Uh, and the catalyst was just a little anecdote. Like I met Corey uh, in 2015 and then my travel plans changed. And all of a sudden I was traveling to Boulder with Bentinu and his team and became friends with all of them. Um, but I only started working more closely. I, I worked at retreats and stuff, but I was in and out, like, you know, and I only started working close, closer when NLS got launched, so right before that. And one of the reasons was, I think it was three years ago or so. Um, and Ben, ben is, he, he doesn't do this necessarily, but when he does it, it's always on point. And what happened was, he directly reflected me in a group chat and he said something along the lines of mark uh, your uh, your shadow of validation seeking is still running the show to some extent and i cannot trust where you're coming from so even though i love you and i would love to work closer with you i just cannot trust where you're coming from and that like hit me like a like a like a dagger in my heart, but not negatively, you know, like I was, I, it was a reveal to me how much, even though I had done so much work already, spiritual work, I have had so many realizations, um, God experiences, all that stuff. There was still some gremlin program operating even when I was aligned or when I thought it was aligned, which was, there was this, and and the the reflection that Ben gave me was like a gateway into surrendering to that, like letting go of that hamster wheel of trying to prove my validate my worth and all that stuff. I stopped, slowed down, and I just sat with it, because Ben said, "Are you willing to eliminate the shadow once and for all?" And that hit me. I was like, "Fuck yes." I don't care what it takes. That's what I, that's what I want. And so I stopped and I just sat with it for days. And it wasn't comfortable at all to see all the little, the little mannerisms and the little uh, <laughs> ways of operating of where I was operating from the shadow that I didn't have words for yet. But the more I started doing this work, I started going to, memories of my childhood and like like just i didn't go there with my intention it, it just happened right by me surrendering so i started seeing images and like past memories and all that stuff and i realized there was this core lack belief that i was operating from which which was picked up when i was maybe even in the womb i don't know there's something wrong with me and it got revealed to me. I was like, oh, fuck. Even, even after meeting Ben and meeting Corey and meeting Luke and all these cool people that are all reflections of my self-love, even within this community, I'm, I'm desperately going to them to prove that I'm good enough. And I could just see that how consuming that was energetically for me as well, but also for my peers. And I just, I just let go of it <clears throat> and it was not comfortable, but I, and now that can still come up, but this tool of immediately admitting defeat, it's like, oh, okay. Okay, so what? I'm not gonna operate from it. I'm not gonna try to prove it wrong because trying to prove there's something wrong with me wrong comes from the same gremlin. I'm already, there's nothing wrong with me. Right, but so in a nutshell, that that uh, period and that practice 
has tremendously impacted me in ways that still to this day, it's, it's still something that just is in my tool belt. And I wouldn't know what to do without it. <laughs> I think we all had that phase, actually. <clears throat> and I love that we're talking about it because I think it, it's an inevitable step, which is the like, oh my God, look at how full of shit I am. Like, whoa, whoa, whoa. It's like you get that one reflection that finally like gets under all the skin, not just like that top layer that you're like, okay, fine. But it like gets under all the layers and now you are just on the hook. Like you just can't not see it. You either have to, you either have to like reject Bentinho, which happens. People do that. Like fully reject these teachings, fully reject this. Like, nope, wrong, bad, not good, not doing that. Don't want to look there. And a common response is just to, you know, opt out like that and sort of reject the, reject the messenger. Or you see like, you see that you're on the hook. You see that you've been exposed. You see, you like see that you've been seen and <clears throat> that the truth of you is using something else to conceal or to get its way or to um, look good or to make things work in a certain way. Um, and it's like, you just get, it's like this whole layer, thick layer of your entire personality or your entire the way you get what you want is like obvious to everyone. I've told this story a few times before. I don't know if you guys have all heard it or not, but <clears throat> um, Bentinho, I'll just keep it brief. Bentinho, we were there maybe five years ago and I asked for a reflection. I was like bored with how the group was going. It just felt like we're not taking advantage of this. We're here with such a special group. Like let's, let's get into some action. And so I, and so Ben was like, okay, then why don't we start with you? And so already there, I felt like, damn it, <laughs> not what I, not what I had in mind, but let's go. And then he said, um, like, okay, like, so tell me about your laugh. And this already was just like, okay, all right. All right. And I really, I really remember the feeling of like, fuck this. Like, I don't need this. And like that comes up, you know, it's like, it's so exposing. It's so like, I either have to like, look there, like look at what's getting pointed at or opt out. Um, and just because I trust this work so much, I trust Bentinho so much. I love this work so much. I, I felt the resistance for sure that comes up. Um, but then I went with it and I was like, okay, let's look at my laugh. Like, let's see. And I, what I eventually saw was that I was using my laugh and other things to sort of socially position and, you know, get a little status increase, use my laugh, like a big, I did this big over the top laugh just to show like, this is where the fun is. This is where the fun, great stuff is happening over here in my corner. And, um, that whatever, you know, losers are over there. So just whatever old, um, old grade school conditioning. Um, <laughs> And, but so that was the type of stuff that I was doing, like using my laugh or using whatever speech, eye contact, everything to just to get to do this sort of social positioning, um, to look good, to basically to make myself look good, to feel better, to sort of, um, yeah, like a, like a status thing. So, and everybody has, everybody has some sort of version of this, like what Mark was describing with the validation seeking, um, so then to get that, to finally get under there, and it took a while, probably took an hour for me to fully see like, whoa, I am doing this all the time. I'm doing this everywhere. This is everywhere. And I remember we were sitting at dinner with like 15 people or so. And just like every time I looked up from the table to just like make eye contact or engage, I felt it. Like I felt it come on. It was almost just this whole like, like a whole character that wanted to start playing and just to start interacting and just get some validation or, or, you know, smile and nod and be impressed with what this person was saying. Or it was like every eye contact, I could feel it in my eye contact with people and my, my relation to everything. So I just had to like push myself back from the table and like, and move back. And I remember Anurag and Mantino were laughing the whole week. Like it was a week of this, but they were just laughing. They're like patting me on the back. They're like, that a girl, 
you know, just like finally, like finally somebody's taking this work on and um, it hurts. Like it's painful. It's hard. It's embarrassing. It's like, wow, you get to see all your, <clears throat> all your nastiest social strategies. Um, and, uh, but yeah, the thing is like when we opt in, even though it's uncomfortable, like opt in for this work, the payoff is like soul work, you know, deathbed work is one way I like to refer to it. It's like the type of work that you take with you. It's like we incarnate for this. It's, it's, um, life giving. So it's the type of thing that like on the deathbed, I would think back to that moment and be like, damn, I should have had that conversation and I should have let them expose what was in there. Um, even though the temptation was so strong to opt out and But so just a little note of encouragement, if you encounter this in your kiddos or whatever, these opportunities that um, there's often like more than what you're looking for on the other side, even though it takes a little bit of courage or it takes a little bit of, you know, pulling up your, pulling up your britches and getting in there. Uh, (laughs) I just, I just got reminded of, uh, of, of one of my ways in which it showed up, uh, which was proving how much I get the teachings. Mm. <laughs> wow. That I actually have direct experience with the I am or the absolute and like trying to prove it to the others. So tiring. <laughs> when I look at it now, it's like, it's cute, but it's, uh, it's Ooh, that's a good one. <clears throat> I think I think more people have that. Yeah, and that's still like and uh, and uh, also another another one is like I'm there now. There's no work. There's no more purification to be done. That, that's another one that I still have to be. I have to stay on top of because it, like it's we're we're human creatures also. We we have psyches, and psyches are just tricky sometimes. <clears throat> But uh, I love that. I, I'm so uh, sad that I wasn't there. For that. Oh, I know you weren't. No, I wasn't there. But uh, yeah. So, and then I had another one come to mind. Um, oh, um, yeah. This this has been huge. Um, like the the tool. I'm not sure like what words he uses now in NLS to talk about this, but it's basically it's just basically self-realization work. Um, but at the time, what stuck in, stuck so much for me was um, dropping any perspective. And I remember I put time into this one, like instead of getting a better perspective or moving back, moving back, which I love also, but it was dropping all perspectives. Um, yeah, I, I, I also had a, a little awakening with this practice where I had so many thoughts, like I had so many, like, almost like, I don't know, I must've been trying to figure something out or get my, get a view on something. And, um, it was like entire competing perspectives. Like, should I, you know, like just like a confusing ball, which actually is like the status quo of most people's minds, I think. Um, And instead of trying to just get a more enlightened perspective or a more enlightened perspective, it was like dropping all views, dropping the view at all, like no view, no perspective at all. And um, yeah, this to me, I remember walking through airports with this and um, just like really taking that on and any any of these practices especially the self-realization practices if you just take them on for real like you that you make them your practice for like a week or a month and you just be a little obsessed about it they make you get you make huge gains so and this was one of the ones that i did was like no view no view also now no view even no even that not that no view zero view zero perspectives it's like no perspective at all no take on this um yeah, so that was one of my one of my favorites from Ben. I think we can yeah. fill, I think we can fill huh? a couple of calls with a favorite favorite uh, insights or realizations or practices. I just want to add one more um, 
<laughs> which it really stuck me. This is actually two of them, um, which is the first one is, it is whatever you say it is 24 seven. And the other one is things are inherently meaningless. Yeah. <clears throat> And they just, they, these are just like, oh, actually, there's no meaning. And I am the meaning giver. It's, it's just uh, so potent. But you were op- uh, wanna, wanting to opening it up? Wanting to opening yeah. it up? Wanting to opening it up? I sound like Gilad. <laughs> you sound like Mark. <laughs> okay, okay. So, <clears throat> yeah, I think we can open it up if anybody the the, what mark and i had in mind was if you guys have any um any general curiosities totally fine but any stuck points or um like where you're at and um not not like we're not going to guarantee that we have answers for every question but um we can for sure share our experience and i'm sure we can be of support somehow so anything any Curiosities, questions, suck points, anything you want to share, you can raise your hand. Indra? Oops, you're still muted. There you go. Hi, Corey and Mark. Hello. Very nice to see um, and connect behind the scenes. <laughs> um, yeah, it makes me more familiar with uh, the teachings and the team. And I have a question for Corey. And um, my question is, um, have you ever uh, taken a break or a time out from um, the teachings or from Ben? And if yes. so, and if so uh, what are your insights on this? <clears throat> Sorry, I meant to mute myself while I coughed. You said, if so, what are my what's on this? Thoughts? Oh, insights. Ah, uh, insights. Um, yeah. Yes. I actually, so early on, um, maybe like two years in, I actually like decided this wasn't for me. <clears throat> and, um, yeah, I just felt like, okay, cool. I got everything I needed from these teachings, milked every last drop, uh, nothing more for me to learn <laughs> here. So, um, and I, I remember I wrote a chat to the to the team at the time, and I said like I think Bentino is not my teacher anymore, and I've got <clears throat> next next stuff to do. And um, and uh, and I remember Bentino wrote back something so cool. Like he was like, "You have my absolute blessing. <laughs> like get out there." It, it, like he had a little tear in his eye. I think he said it was like the sweetest message. And so I did for like two weeks and, um, (laughs) um, yeah, but, and, and, you know, there've been other times where actually longer times where I, where, um, I don't know, for different reasons, what it's been like seven years. So, but there've been other periods where like I was close to getting another, um, like job in Colorado where I'm from and, um, I only, every time I sort of left or took a break or whatever you call it, it doesn't really feel like that. It always just feels, I mean, it's never felt like dramatic, except for that time in the beginning where I was like, this is, I think this is the end, Um, which was very sweet, but it's never felt dramatic. It's just felt sort of like, okay, cool. We're sort of, you know, ebbing and flowing and Um, Every time, though, what has been so cool is that it's increased my appreciation for Bentinho and for this community. It's increased it. It's not just been like, oh, I kind of missed that. It's been like, wow, like the bar that is held here, that's held here, it's not held out there, not like this. 
there's amazing stuff out there. There's amazing teachings and teachers and communities and bars. It's just not like this. It's not. Um, and even the way it feels to me, it's like safe. I don't know if that's um, everybody has their own interpretation of that word. But for me, it's it's safe because it's so honest. It's so real. It's so committed to um, what I really am and not the the stuff on the surface. So I've always felt just like, wow, this is um, rare. Like, in fact, non-existent out there, this degree of um, competency and um, just this level of compassion and generosity and um, and just like actually walking the talk of the teachings. Not only Ben, also the whole community. Like people, this is really what, <clears throat> it's like really what we're working on. So, and that, I love that so much. Like actually this is, we're studying this. Like you guys are here studying this. That's what we're doing here. It's not just like, it's not just lip service. It's actually what we're doing. Like people in your own time, you're thinking about this and working on this and having breakthroughs and <clears throat> talking to each other. And, you know, it's it's amazing actually this community. So every time I've sort of left, you could say it's, made me be like, this is the best thing on earth. It's made me come back stronger. So, <clears throat> but yeah, my only real time of like leaving was that little, <clears throat> that little two week departure. And, uh, and I think at that time I even just was like, yeah, just felt like uh, almost, it was mainly just for me to see that I was allowed to leave. You know, it was almost like a test. Cause I, I had also, um, I was part of this kind of like marketing group before that. And they would, they would pressure you if you wanted to leave. It was kind of like network marketing. And if you wanted to leave, they would make you like call your, call someone and, and, you know, you're out of integrity if you want to leave and all this. And, um, and that rubbed me the wrong way. So I, what I kind of, I think what I was doing early on was like, if I am just done with this, is that okay? And it was like, so, okay. It was so supportive. It was so sweet. It was so loving. It was so normal is how I interpreted it. So test pass. <laughs> That's a long answer. Is that, does that uh, satisfy your? Yes. Sweet. Thank Thanks you. for your question. Yeah. Jesse. Um, I don't really have a question. I've just really, I'm enjoying talking about these things and hearing about uh, it's nice to hear the team leaders sharing your experience too. That really, uh, it makes this feel whole for me. And and I, I feel like I'm participating from a different point of view, um, creator's view. So thank you. I'm enjoying this. Leveling up is like, why wouldn't you? Oh, and that's the other thing. I, I left a while, I left a while ago. Um, I went to a retreat and then I left. And then even at the beginning of the year, I, I left NLS, um, cause I made up in my head that it was something financial. I decided that that thought could be prevalent. And so I, I probably can't do this over like Christmas and this and that. And by the time the springtime came, it had become so clear that yeah there's just there's just nothing else that like uh, I finance the finance was a lie like it wasn't it felt real at the time but it was just like no there's nothing more that I that I want to do I almost feel like I don't have a choice if I don't do this then what's the point <laughs> and so it feels so wonderful to be back and embracing all this it's um I'm so grateful and to all of you it's always wonderful to see everybody you know doing this thing so thank you thank you for um being with me today I'm I feel very very grateful that's about it <clears throat> beautiful Jesse thank you so much that what an uplifting awesome share thank you so cool go ahead John Oh, there you go. Cool. So, Jennifer, Jesse, and Jonathan, may the J's. 
have their day. So, <laughs> what does it mean? What does it mean? All the way. <laughs> um, cool. So my my um, interest was, yeah, where where were you coming from when you, let's say got involved in this, um, in these, in a more, let's say, um, active way in the NLS or whatever it was before that, but is more active part of the team or whatever it was. What? Yeah, where were you coming from? Were you looking to be teachers to share the teachings or were you, was it more from a this is an upgrade to my life where you've always had a very clear, let's say, concept that you're going in this kind of direction. This is, you know, I'd, I'd love to to hear from, from both of you about, about that. If it's, if my answer, if my question is clear. Yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> uh, there's a, it's a little bit of a, there've been like multiple times of this. So, but I can say sort of from the beginning, um, from the beginning, actually, first of all, my first uh, sense was like, whoa, Bentinho was teaching in my town um, and I'd never heard of him before. And somebody was like, if you want to come see this 26 year old enlightened guy, come by here on Monday. So I was like, OK. Um, and. Uh, and I just kept coming on Mondays and I was just, the first time I saw him, though, I was like whatever that guy has, I want to learn that. That's what I want. Just way before any interest in spirituality whatsoever. Like very, very uh, startup entrepreneurial kind of life. And then, but just running into that frequency and that like teachings like that just felt so honest. Like that was what occurred to me. Like, damn, like that's so real. It's so real. It's like the education I wish I had all my life. Like this is finally like someone teaching the type of classes that I wish that I've been wanting to learn everywhere else. So, and after a few weeks of coming, I just, I, uh, I was also, I was working full time, but I just like went, went up to him and I was like, I know a lot of people in this town and I have a bunch of skills and I just know I want to support. <laughs> just let me know if you have any, any need for any of these skills just super. And, and at first he was like, all right, thanks. Bye. <laughs> but then I, yeah, but then later, you know, eventually invited me along to some team thing. And so it was just like, just a knowing, just like, I love this. I want to be surrounded by this. I want to support this. I don't know how, I don't really care how, um, I just know this is like the direction for me right now. So, so I, I don't think I was coming from any I had no, yeah, I had no sense of like being on the team or anything like that. Just like that way. That's exactly what I was um, curious about because I know, well, there is no right answer. It's just very interesting to hear how, yeah, how that sort of unfolds, you might say, for different for different people. So I know Mark would, you know, this is why it's cool to hear different versions. So yeah, yeah, this is great. Nice. Well, in short, before I got conditioned by school and like whatever, you know, I was I was I I was born in the matrix in a matrix within the matrix, like a little small town in the in the back corner of the Netherlands, pretty um, three D, but but I like. The first few years of my life, I knew I was here for a reason, an important reason. And then I lost sight of that, so to speak, um, until I started meditating. And then the friend who pointed me to meditation sent me a Bantini's video. And funny, the first response was, this guy had too many mushrooms. <laughs> I don't know what he's talking about. But... But he kept coming back in my feet and I had some experiences in my dreams, which uh, shifted my receptivity. And especially uh, uh, after I met him, it was like, oh, I'm here for something important. I remember that now. I remember 
that feeling I had coming into this world. And he's here for the same thing. He's my brother. Like, this is, I, I, I could just feel I'm in this for, for a long time. Um, and how I got involved in the team, I was just, I wasn't seeking anything. Uh, I wasn't seeking to be involved. It just happened, just like Corey. Uh, yeah, so that's the short story. No, that's great. That was, yeah, that was exactly what was interesting because it gives some, yeah, it, it's nice to know a little bit, yeah, just a little bit more about you guys, essentially. So that's, uh, and then one other, because I know this is a, a constant um, uh, topic, subject, concern, whatever, but you you have to also integrate this into um, our 3D life or, or whatever it is. And this is a lot of what the teaching is and why this I find so yeah, worthwhile is because we can with each other, you know, look at those aspects of, this is why I loved your, um, Corey, you were on the, the mirror talks and, and that was because I remember it was just after some, you know, good retreat and you know, all the data and all the information is there. And then you're like, wow, yeah, but wait, how, how does this work in practice? And so those were some really great um, ways of doing that. So I see like here, we're just taking that further as it were. So that really helps. So I'm sure more of that will come. Thank you both very much. Thanks, Jonathan. Great to see you. Likewise. Uh, Angela? Oh. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Hey, guys. Um, I would love to hear from you how you um, distinguish or balance your sort of receiving of Ben and the team's support in your purification versus validation. Like meaning for me, I think I have this distortion. Like I want him to be proud of me <laughs> and I want you guys to be proud of me. And part of that maybe is really good because I'm choosing really what I perceive to be the highest level reflections. But then also part of it is like, well, am I just doing it to prove to you that I'm good enough or that, um, that I'm doing the work, right? And so like when you were at, um, you were saying at that retreat and they were like, hey, good job because they could see you doing the work. Like to me, that would represent like a really positive way to use the reflection versus sometimes I find myself like, oh, is Ben proud of me? Like, what, what would he think, you know? And like, what would everybody think? So um, I would love to hear how you balance it and how you would recommend maybe um, clearing that distortion or using that distortion for the greatest outcome. I hope that <laughs> question was clear. I love that question. I love that question. And by the way, we are really proud of you. We're all super stoked about your story. It's true. We talk about it. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah. Um, uh, okay, but I love this question. This is like close to my heart, actually, because um, I remember, like, <clears throat> I think I just I relate, and I think a lot of people relate to this. It's like we, you want positive confirmation from the people you look up to. And, um, this was like super big for, it still is, I'm sure like it, but it was a theme for me for sure. In the beginning of sort of being around Bentinho and this team and doing this work and even, and before, um, and what is so freaking cool about that, about this container specifically and validation <clears throat> is that you can't depending on, on who from, but especially Bentinho and for most of us on the team, you can't get fake validation. So the valid, if you are like, I'm just going to do something and see if I can make you proud. If it's, if there's pure, if it's really pure and if it's like, you're just sharing something that's actually 
an awesome thing that you went through, a, a real process, a real growth experience. And, you know, it's not coming from like, um, it's not distorted in order to consume, but it's actually just like an excitement. And yes, you do want us to be proud, but also it's just so exciting and it's so real for you right now. It'll get validated. Um, but if it's coming from, if it's, if it's coming from some sort of consumerism and that's, and it's more relevant for your growth, for your development, for your freedom, that that doesn't get reflected, that instead of validating you, we kind of say like, oh, cool. <laughs> or, you know, or whatever. And we've all been through this a trillion times. I'm telling you, there is no shortage of this in this community. So buckle up. Um, so, but if there's, um, if there's a seeking for validation, basically it's just that you can't strategize your way here the same way you can strategize elsewhere. So elsewhere, it's, it's much easier to, to sort of X plus Y, like do this, get validation. And here that might work a little bit in the beginning. And then if there's some sort of pattern or we can see that there's like, a, um, you know, you're, you're using this recurringly in order to get a certain result and that's what's keeping you bound or that's your sort of like your freedom is behind that wall. For sure, we're going to we're going to knock on the wall. Like for sure, the reflection is going to be to stop validating because that's going to to validate would be to perpetuate the um the gremlin or the the pattern. So <clears throat> I actually I think in a way I think it's true to say this, but that that just go for it. Like try to get all the validation you can here. It's a it'll work. That's my point is that it'll work. When you get validated, it's believable here. So you can try and then you won't sometimes, but then don't don't let that just be like, okay, fuck them then. Like they didn't give me validation, I'm out. Actually, actually, if you're gonna do go this route, actually use, do make a teaching out of it. Like try to get all the validation you can. And then when it stops working, see what does. And it's gonna be more real. It's gonna be you being more real or you having less pretense or you being more free or you, and that's what's gonna start generating the, validation that you seek. So it's actually a complete package. If you want to seek validation in this container, it'll get you there. That's awesome. <laughs> so helpful yeah. because a lot of times I find myself, okay, well, like hiding because I'm like, oh, I just want validation. But what what you're saying gives me more freedom to like fucking go for it. Either way I win. <laughs> in this just particular don't get upset when you don't get it because it's not because we hate you ever, ever ever it's never that whatever people say out there that's never the case it's never dislike or or rejection it's always no that doesn't work like you can't pass go with that anymore because you're using it and your freedom is behind that shield of validation seeking so even so so to um, opt out of the validation is the most loving thing that we could do in that case so trust that like if you're not getting validation trust that and like persist basically stick with it see it as a teaching like opt in for that whole teaching of validation seeking this is the only place that i know of that it, where it can really work awesome thank you <laughs> yeah cool question i love that question this was great right. yeah it was it felt so nice it felt exactly how uh how we sort of felt it's so warm and just fun and connected and feels really beautiful to feel you guys like this and just have it's cozy, you know, it's chiselic. Chiselic. <laughs> no, it was very sweet. And I feel like Mark and I will probably do more of these. So this has been super fun. Um, great to connect to you guys like this. And we'll see you later. Mark, anything else? I really loved just the lightness of today's call and the, the open stage. and. Everybody shares and uh, questions and really love uh, reminiscing almost like on the, on the yeah. time spent because we never really do that when we're together because we're so like in what's, what's present now. So it's nice to look back and see, uh, see what we've, what we've experienced or where we, where we come from. And, yeah. And thank you guys so much for those questions. Like, it's so cool just to get like such a transparent question of like, here's where I'm at. Like, and it's not clear. It's maybe a little messy how I'm going to share this, but it's so nice actually. And just I, like I was just talking about, but it just creates such a circuitry um, 
And for sure, you can just feel, you feel now how this call feels compared to the beginning. It's like such a pervasive ease. It's just like, ah, comfortable, like friendly, connected. I could ask anything. Doesn't it feel like you could just ask any question? You could, it's like, you could bear like cards face up on the table vibes right now. It's so no nice. So it's, what Mark? No, just I said, no more hands, please. <laughs> yeah, true. That's message, not right now. <laughs> it was just a stupid joke. I really like, I really love, love what you said. And I agree. Like, it's just open, just an open heart. All right, beauties. Thank All you right. so much. We love you guys so much. Mwah. Mm.